You know what's better than a Lamborghini? A real horse. You got real horsepower. This is more than one horsepower. Just like Ferraris, the horse symbol. Off we go. And it's so I took my mom on the trip, going to see the farm. You'll go crazy if you live in a city all the time. Even if you don't have a farm, just go out camping every once in a while. You know, go back to your roots. Mom, you agree? I agree. Goodbye city. Nap by the river. Can you hear it? That's the best sound. Right here is where I want to build a house. Look at this house site. That's the Appalachian Trail over there. Now you never want to build on top of a hill completely because of the wind. But the views are beautiful. I want to build uh, the house completely off the grid. Solar, um, there, there's enough solar here. You got spring water on this farm, some of it. So that way if the world ends, I'll have some place to go. You got enough, enough woods here. You can heat the house, heat the water. Always look for a few things. Look for land that doesn't have too much rocks, number one. Number two, water. Water, water, water. Really not water should be number one. Um, and then you also want to look for uh, good building sites, somewhat out of the wind. You want to look for soil fertility. I did a soil test on this farm. See that little moss? That means it needs lime, calcium. But it's pretty good soil there. That's what you want. Look at that. The oak, walnut. That right there, five, six years, even 10 years, have amazing wood. People don't realize, you have to cut trees down. Not because you're trying to hurt the environment, but because trees get old and die. If you don't cut that down, it doesn't let a new tree grow. When I used to live in a mobile home, a big tree like that fell right through it. Need a book out here. Actually, no book. Just relax and think. You get your non-GMO corn, you grow it yourself. This field right here, put into non-GMO corn for your chickens for milk cows, and then you put it back into grass, alfalfa. That GMO stuff, nobody knows what it's gonna do. That's why you wanna eat grass-fed if you can, because maybe there's no problem with GMO, but do you wanna take the risk with your body is the question. You wanna be the, F, uh, you know, the FDA's guinea pig? Grow melons down in the bottom here. And then you grow, because melons need the best soil. Usually the best soil is at the bottom of the hill. Non-GMO corn, you got heirloom tomatoes. When I'm done with this farm, it'll have more trees than it started. But some areas here I'll put back in the pasture. But some of the steep, poor soil areas, they never should add cows on it. It can't, it doesn't grow grass and you just destroy it. Cows are heavy on the soil. If I cut that, those trees down, that's about eight acres. I'm getting ready to put 30 acres back into trees. So it'll still be a net gain of 22 acres. Good grass builds soil fertility faster than trees. That's why the most fertile places in the world are not under trees. It's the Midwest of the United States. You gotta look at the aspects. This is north facing, gets less, less grass. It also grows cold weather plants. This is a cold weather plant, clover. On the flip side, you'll see more grass. I want to show you what it means to um, give sweat equity. That, if you don't have any money, start with sweat equity, meaning go work for somebody else, use your time, energy to make them money. That's what I did. I'm here at Joel Salatin, my first mentor's farm, and he said, if you want to work for me, you can live in this little cabin. And it didn't have a toilet, well it had a bucket, so and it had no heat or no water. This was my bed right here. <laughs> I had bunk beds because yeah. sometimes there'd be another guy working. And this was the toilet, the bucket. I bet you could still. Oh, they changed the floor. There was a hole in the floor, and the bucket was underneath. Oh. Nightstand here, and I put a cup of water in it to drink. And we'd sleep in sleeping bags. And when I woke up, it was a, always an ice, ice. block. That's oh how you know God. it's cold in the morning. You reach over, it's like, 
the whole thing goes to <laughs> You can't start out at the top. You start out at the bottom. That's how the game goes. The natural order of things. <clears throat> Everybody say Thanksgiving. <laughs> Starts early around here. <laughs> Takes a long time for it to be ready for Thanksgiving. Just add water? <laughs> Daniel, what do we have in here? Oh, 2100 baby chicks. <laughs> Look at their face. Scowl. <laughs> kind of cranky all the time. I did soil test. Joel's soil versus his neighbors right over the fence, and Joel's way better. Joel's farm is like almost twice the fertility by using better farm practices. Can hardly walk. Hey, five, two, oh. three, four, five. What did <laughs> I say? I'm a master. <laughs> Still, I'm not in the flight distance. Three, four, five. This one's trying to tame. Right there, my hand got it. Even a lot of the eggs you see at Whole Foods, where it says organic, yes, they might be organic feed, but they're still inside, they're not on grass, they're caged up, so they're not getting to eat bugs and they're not eating grass. Just like a human, if you don't eat any salad, you're not healthy. These chickens are getting fresh salad. They eat the grass, they eat the bugs, they scratch through, they're, they're being a chicken. You wanna eat animals that are living the way they were meant to. I used to have to get 100 dozen eggs a day. These are good eggs. Thick calcium. See how thick the shell is? And these are the bright orange eggs. That's what you want. This is all natural oyster shells from the ocean. That's how they get their calcium. So they lay hard eggs. The beef that you eat regularly is from cows that are sitting in a big manure lot eating corn, which is not natural for a cow. The cows here were moved to a different pasture. So rotational grazing. Look how nice that grass is. So the best beef you can eat comes from rotationally grazed cows. They're healthier, less parasites. Um, they're getting clean, better grass, grass fed. I'm working on another brand, cowsonapasture.com. Now the pigs are about to be let out on pasture, but now they're building compost for Joel. Joel calls it piggerator pork. He puts corn in there and the, cor the, the pigs kind of flip the soil over, I mean the compost over and aerate it for them. They'll be out on pasture soon. It's kind of cool. They love it. And it doesn't smell bad because it's compost. It's not That looks like it's manure, but it's not. It's compost. All you that are drinking protein powder, whey protein, stuff like that, even egg protein, I'm thinking of doing a, a pasture-raised uh, egg protein powder. It'll be the best. I'm serious. No one has ever done that before. This is the kind of food you want to eat. Pigs on pasture, cows on pasture, chickens on pasture, not in factories, not on concrete. 